this is the first time you've watched an orthodontic video by me, please hit the subscribe button and there's a notification bell that you can see new orthodontic lab videos. I post them every Tuesday, 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So thanks for joining and let's get busy with this video. Hey, welcome to this video. This is Steve Zara from Zara Dental Lab. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you a little bit something about when you run into a problem and how to solve it regarding expanders. In this example, we have a very, very, very narrow, very deep vaulted palate. And these guys cause many problems because every now and then you have a 12 millimeter screw that's pretty typical that you wanna get some expansion and you can't submerge this expander down low enough because it's way too wide. It's gonna be bumping into the palate. So there's two ways to handle this problem. And the first one is very simple you would buy a smaller screw. Pretty simple because you can get a 10 millimeter screw and you can drop this thing down right in the palette where you want it to be and bend the arms and you can, you're can you still gonna have enough room for clearance when the palette opens up. But here, this is what I wanted to tell you is with this palette sitting up so high, if you were to leave this in there when it's gonna start touching, it's so high up on the the child's tongue that it's going to be a complete irritant. Not only is it going to ch probably change their speech, it's going to give them something to play with because their tongue is going to be right here. You want it to sit down low to avoid all these problems. Let's say you don't have enough of these screws. You didn't buy them and you ran out and this is all you have. Well, and this is for instance, I can get, here's a, a American penny. This will tell you how much distance you have. So it's a very, very small palette. Um, you can see how big a quarter is. So clearly we need a smaller screw. And I'm gonna teach you how you can change this screw into fitting in this palette and still going ahead with treatment as, po as a plan. All right, to begin with, I buy my diamond wheels at Home Depot. They're actually pretty cheap, and you can buy them at the Dremel section in Home Depot. It's um, where they typically store all the tools. Um, these burrs are about uh, a little under $20, and they last a good long time, and they're good for cutting appliances like this, where you don't want to use your good diamond burrs. Depending on how wide and how narrow I need to shorten my screw is where I will set the parameters. Typically it's about two millimeters in. When using a diamond burr, you want to thoroughly cut through the screw, let the diamond do the work, but you don't want to go too close where you're actually hitting the arms of the screw. Just enough to remove, just enough to, you can see where they just pop off. Now, why I'm doing this, the actual housing of the screw becomes very, very hot, obviously. But the way these screws are designed, they absorb so much heat in the housing that it won't actually distort the um, expander. It won't cause any problems to it. Now, here I, I made a 12 millimeter screw, now a 10 millimeter screw. I like in this step I'll use a like a stone wheel of some sort to round off because they're very they're, I just created very sharp edges on the expander on the spindles. So if you just round them off real nice and easy, it feels um, perfectly normal against the tongue. And when I pumice and polish, when I'm finished with the appliance, I do the same thing. I'll run some pumice and polish over those parts that were trimmed off to make sure that they're perfectly smooth. Now that, now that the expander is shortened, I can adjust it the way I need it to to make it fit into this little tiny narrow palette. Here I use some of my special glue that I use to glue over my appliances down. I love working with this glue because I can 
spray it and activate it, and then I can move the screw around to make sure that I have the proper positioning that I really, really want. It doesn't glue right away. It gives me a couple seconds of working time, which is awesome. Now this is a really cool little nifty trick because my expander has been spot welded that I can move an arm around if I wanted to, to put it in the right position as shown. Next up is flux and heat shield. Notice I don't bury the expander in a ton of heat shield. This type, this brand of expander can handle tons of heat without ruining the housing. And to speed things up, appliance has been soldered. In this next step of the video, I will demonstrate how I use an e-cutter to trim up this model. I do it directly on the model to absorb as much heat as possible without causing any harm to the screw. If you would like me to make a, a longer version of the video showing me how I finish, please leave a comment below, let me know, and we can do that. Here we have the finished product after just being pumiced and polished. And in this little demonstration, you can see this is what a 12 millimeter expander looks like. And you can see how much I trimmed off it to make this new mini expander. Now the question I have for you while you're watching this video, can you do this with your expanders? Can the company that you're using, can you trim if you had to trim an expander and not worry about either a ruining the expander, ruining the housing for overheating it, or just in general, being able to even make the cuts. With this type of expander, you can do it. I just showed it to you. Thanks for watching.